Okay, welcome back. This is part B of lesson 18. The first video was getting quite lengthy, so I decided to split this up into two and finish off this last couple of papers in a separate video. Um, now we can, now we've done the greatest common factors by just listing all the factors. I'm going to be circling the greatest one of the two groups, but there's another way to do it, and that's using factor trees, and that is using prime factorization. So I'm going to do an example here. And how about we do 42 to the 7? So if we have the number 42, and we're looking for a GCF of 42 and 70, then I'm going to do a factor tree of 42. I'm going to do a factor tree of 7. Okay, so I always recommend doing factor trees and putting the prime smallest prime factor on the left so we have a nice deep factor tree. Let me explain what I mean by that. If I did 7 times 6 and then did, or let me redo that again, let's say 6 times 7 and then you'd have 2 times 3. Um, it's kind of messy how the tree ends up. Some branches end here. If I continued it might go over this way and then this way and then it's hard to follow. So I would recommend starting with the smallest prime number, and since this is an even, it's divisible by 2. 42 divided by 2 is 21. 21 divided by 3 is 7. So we just get a nice smooth flow of the three numbers. So we have 2, 3, and 7, which are prime factors. 70 is even. 2 times 35 ends in 5, 5 times 7. These are all prime. And we have a list 2, 5, and 7. What we have in common between the two is a 7 and a 2. Okay? So the GCF of 42 and 70 is 14. Okay? This way is a little bit easier. There's still a better way, but this is a second way we can do it. I'm not going to go through all these and do these, but what you do is do a prime factorization of both. Circle your prime factors. Multiply them. 7 times 2 is 14. 7 times 2 is 14. 14 times 3 is 42. 14 times 5 is 7. And what's left over is what you multiply by to get those numbers. Okay? Moving on. Find the GCF. Okay. Um, let's skip until we get to here. Is the product of your least common multiple and greatest common factor less than, greater than, or equal to the product of your numbers? So if I take, let's pick a value that's on the last page. Um, let's do LCM of 8 and 18 and GCF of 8 and 18. Okay. So if we're doing LCM, of 8 and 18, and the GCF of 8 and 18. This is asking if the product of these two is less than, greater than, or equal to the product of your numbers. So if I take 18 times 8, it's 144. Okay? So the product of our numbers is 144. And we want to know if the product of the LCM and the GCF is going to equal that, be less than or greater than. So I've got to find the LCM of 8 and 18, which is 8, 16, 8 times 3 is 24, 8 times 4 is 32, 8 times 5 is 40, 8 times 6 is 40, 8 times 6 is 48, carry the 4, 6, well, 6 times, 5 times 8 is 40, 6 times 8 is 48, I was looking at the 18, my apologies. 7 times 8 is 56, 8 times 8 is 64, 9 times 8 is 72, and 10 times 8 is 8. 18, 36, add 2, subtract 2, remember that, 54, add 2, 7, subtract 2, 2, 72, so there's, the, there is the least common multiple. 72. Okay. Now do the GCF of 8 and 18. So factors of 18 are 
1 times 18, 2 times 9, 3 times 6. So 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, and 18 are factors of 18. Factors of 8 are 1 times 8. And 2 times 4. Greatest common factors of these is 2. Okay? So what they're saying is if we take the LCM and the GCF and multiply them, so 72 is the greatest common, or least common multiple, the 2 is the greatest common factor. 2 times 2 is 4, 7 times 2 is 14, and if you look, that's what the product of the two numbers is. So that's kind of handy. So whatever you find easier to do, if it asks for the LCM and the GCF, you can multiply the two numbers together and get a product. Find either the LCM or the GCF, and divide that number by it, and that will be the other. In other words, if 18 times 8 is 144, and I find the LCM and I get 72, then I can just stop there and go 72 goes into 144 two times. And I know that that will be the G's. Okay, so another short. Okay, so now it says find the GCF from the two numbers and rewrite the sum using the distributive property. Now we haven't discussed this yet, and I mentioned it before, but I skipped over it, so I'm going to mention it for now. So if I find the GCF of 12 and 18, I'm not going to do all of these, I'll just do one or two. Factors of 12 are 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4. Factors of 18 are 1 times 18, 2 times 9, and 3 times 6. The greatest common is 6. Okay? And so I'm going to take that and I'm going to represent 12 as the greatest common factor times how many we can eat. So I'm going to represent 12 as 6 times 2. And I'm going to represent 18 as the greatest common factor times the other factor that makes 18. Okay? So you take 6 times 2 plus 6 times 3, and we're going to distribute that. So I'm going to put 6 here. I'm going to put this in parentheses. I'm going to put our two numbers with the plus sign inside this parentheses here. This is called the distributive part. Okay? And that is going to equal 6 times 3 plus 2, which is 5, which is going to be so 12 plus 18. Okay? I'll do one more of these, but that's it. I'm going to skip down and I'll do 44 and 33. One times 44. Two times 22. Four plus four is eight, so three won't go. Four times 11. Five, no, it doesn't end in five or zero. Six, seven times six is 42. No, so seven, no. Eight, no. Nine, no. Ten, no. And that's it. 33 is 1 times 33, 3 times 11, and that is it. Greatest common factor of these two is 11. So I'm going to represent 44 as that greatest common factor times what we multiplied by 4, plus the greatest common factor times what we multiplied by to get 33. I'm going to distribute that and take the 4 and the 3 and put them together in a parentheses. And 11 times 4 plus 3, which is 7, and that's going to give me 7. 7. 44 plus 33 is definitely 77. Okay? And that's a little lesson on the distributive property, so it might not be a bad idea for you to try these three. Okay? And here's the rule. Add another example to one of these two statements applying factors of the distributive property. Choose any number for n, a, and b. I can choose any number. So if I chose n to be 5, a to be 4, n again is still 5. B is, let's make b 3. So if I said n equals 5, a equals 4, and b equals 3, this is called substitution. n, n, a, a. b is 3. That's going to equal 5 times 
four plus three. Okay. Next, add another example to one of these two statements of my factors distributed property choose any number. So that's what they're talking about. And if I wanted to solve this, then that would be five times four plus three, which is seven. And that's going to be thirty-five. If I do it here with this, I can choose different numbers or the same. I'll do different. So if I let n equal 4, a equals 3, and b equals 2, then n is 4, a is 3, minus n, which is 4, b, which is 2, which equals n times 3 minus 2. So 4 times 3 is 12, minus 4 times 2 is 8, which is the same as 4 times 1. 12 minus 8 is 4, 4 times 1 is 4. If I did the same up here, which I should have done, 20 plus 15, 35 equals 35. So this proves that the distributive property is true regardless of which way we do it. And that's the end of lesson 18. Go do your problems.